Hey guys, um, today I'm going to be um, going through my seeds and deciding what I want to put in my 2023 um, garden. So um, I want to start off by saying that right now I'm not selecting my full garden. The things I'm selecting now are things that take long to germinate um, and things that need to be well established by the time it's time to um, plant plants out in the garden. So things like peppers, um, things like onions, um, eggplant, I don't know, there's several things, uh, loofahs, so things like that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, talk through some of my pepper selections, which is the most important thing um, right now to get started. And yeah, so I hope you enjoy. And let me know the things that you're gonna be putting in your garden this year. Um, or are you trying anything new in your garden? Okay, so I have this little basket here. These are all the seeds that I bought this season um, for the garden, but I have two, I use these like, they're picture box, they're picture box, I use these boxes here um, for stories and I have two of them. So I'll pull out everything that I need from them for the things that I'm gonna start seeds and then I'll have a little stash on the side and later on in the week we'll start to plant those seeds together so first off I'm gonna go through this box kind of show you what I've what I purchased in this basket um, and then setting aside the things that I'm going to um, that I'm going to grow this year so First off, I have these serrano pe peppers. Um, these are like a shorter variety. They're not the long skinny ones that you're used to seeing in the grocery store. Um, I really like these because they have they have a hotter heat. I don't know. <laughs> They're much spicier than the regular ones. And my husband, he, he eats fire. He likes to, he likes uh, really spicy stuff. So I make sure that all the peppers I plant are um, not all of them, but a lot of them are super hot or very hot varieties um, so that when we make our salsa for the year, the salsa is hot enough for him to enjoy. Another thing that I purchased this year, because my husband really loves these, so I plant several of these plants every year, are cucumber melons or Mexican mouse melons. Um, they're the size of a grape, but they're like a lemony cucumber flavor. They're super delicious and they they produce bumper crops and they're just most of them don't make it inside the house they're eating out in the garden uh, while we're working i got several varieties of cucumber that's nothing special it's just cucumbers um this year i ran out of um tomatillos and so i bought several varieties of greens and purples and what i didn't realize when i was shopping for seeds in my different places was I double bought a lot of things, so especially tomatillos. Um, I also have here some broccolinis. Um, I have a, set, a couple of varieties that I like to grow. Um, I prefer buying or growing broccolinis over heads of broccoli. Um, broccolinis um, send off several shoots of little broccoli flowerets versus one big head. I just feel like it's more, it makes more sense to grow this, for me at least. Uh, I don't have the space to grow several broccoli heads to make it worth growing, but if I plant like three broccolini plants, I'll get several little flowerets um, throughout the growing season um, that makes it worth it. And then you can eat the leaves and the stems on these as well, so it's really good. Um, so this is one of the things that I'll start now, um, just because I want to have an established plant. Uh, when I start to put things out in the garden. So peppers, the broccolini, and I always every year buy flowers. Zinnias are my favorite, so I have several varieties of that. Um, I bought some watermelon, a pineapple tomato. Uh, this was my first year trying to grow a pineapple tomato. I've never had that one, but I was, tomatoes are my favorite thing to grow in this in the garden, and so whenever I find another fun variety, I'm always gonna try it. These are some that I just got like at big box stores. More cucumbers, pickling ones. Um, this year I'm gonna do a big roll of corn. 
Um, so one whole bed will be dedicated to corn. Um, so I got several varieties. This is the Silver Queen Hybrid. Um, this one, um, mostly you want to put plant these outside when the when the, your soil is ready to be planted in. Um, they don't really like their roots disturbed. Um, I risk it. I'm going to start these maybe three weeks before um, my last frost date. So you don't want to get a huge head start on these just because you don't want them to be excessively big when you're ready to put them out. I just need them to be sprouted and have their first few leaves, true leaves on them. So they'll be fairly small plants when I take them out. Um, and you'll do, I'll do one corn per, I'll do like one of those little micro cells, not micro, but the little ones, like the one inch by one inch, um, just so that I can get a little head start and be very, very careful when you're moving them from the trays to the, to the ground so you don't disturb the roots too much because um, you can stunt the growth. But I do it. So I got more zinnias, more tomatoes. I have grown these several times, so they're just fun. I just needed to replace them. I really enjoy cherries um, I, and grape tomatoes. I do a lot, a lot, a lot of ch cherry and grapes. Um, so I got some, a couple new, new varieties, Garden Delight. Uh, yellow pear is probably my favorite, so I needed to replace those. I got another watermelon. Um, and then more some herbs, basil, mint, peppermint. Um, another, this is probably one of my favorite one, honeycomb um, hybrid cherries. More from the store. Long keepers. Um, long keepers. So if you're, um, if you're ever going to try to store your tomatoes, like after, um, after your your first frost and you have to your garden's done and you want tomatoes these are the tomatoes you want to grow these ones are designed to um, last so they can they're shelf stable for quite a while several weeks and so you can have two three months after depending on how you store them and how when you pick them you can have to make fresh tomatoes two or three months after uh, your garden's done so long keepers look out for those but these ones i've never seen these in the store i order these directly from burpee one year um but this year i found a new tomato um i mean not tomato i what is it uh a seed seller i'm trying to find what the brand it's like roar i'm trying to find um okay so this brand this seed brand um, this is the first time I've um, bought from them this year, but they have like other brands that they have in their store, and so that's where I found these this year. Um, but you'll, but you can guarantee find them finding them on Burpee's website. But they're pretty expensive on that website. This one it was decently priced, so I got some, got more some tomatoes, yellow perfection. Um, these are new peppers for me this year. These are chocolate sweet peppers. So those will get started this year or like now. Another per place I like to buy seeds a lot from, let's probably have the biggest collection from um, this seller is the MI Gardener. Here's my whole batch from them. This is what I bought from him this year, these ones. Um, some flowers, more watermelon. I bought this one just to try it. I don't know that I'll have any success actually growing this, but I thought it would be fun to try. And then of course, more tomatoes, tomatoes. I'll always have an abundance of tomatoes because I just love them so much. I probably have about 40 to 50 plants every year of just tomato. Okay, and then I like um, all the peppers. So this is a purple cane pepper. I've never tried this one before, so I wanted to grow it and see how it, how it does, what it tastes like, how hot it is if it's worth getting it. And then some of my bigger peppers that are I do for like cooking. Uh, basilla, this is basilla bajillo. Um, a nacho grande. This is another kind of a Mexican staple is chile de arbol. Those are all things I'll start this right now. And then I got some onions. These are like cebollitas, these are the little, the types of onions that um, 
um, like you grill, at least, I don't know if everyone does, but in the Mexican culture, like when we're doing carne asada outside on the grill, um, we'll grill a bunch of these on the side as a side, um, as a side dish and eat them alongside your meat. So um, I'll start these. Here's some more purple tomatillos, not just one, but two of them. So now I have three packs of these. And then um, broccoli rab, rab um, more broccolini. So I'll start that. And let's see what else did I get. Um, I got some loofah. I'm gonna try growing loofah this year. I probably only need it once for the next several seasons because they're supposed to be very prolific and we'll see how it goes. Um, some butternut squash, more tomatoes. This was a freebie little herb garden. I don't know, it's like a variety. Who knows what's in there? More flowers, zinnias, polar bear zinnia, and some sunflower seeds. I'll talk about sunflower Steve uh, on another video, but please go check him out on YouTube. He's on Instagram. Um, he's a great story, uh, and you want us to go and support him and buy some of his sunflowers. These are a brand new variety called Vagos Fantasy, and they're like double layered um, petals, double layer petals. I don't know how to say it. Um, oh my gosh, they're beautiful sunflowers though. This is, uh, this will be my second year growing them. Cucumbers, more herbs, sweet corn, more onions. I think these are Walla Wallas. These grow great in my area. Um, and here's my last little bunch from this year's purchase. These are probably one of my favorite flowers to grow in my front, like on my on my porch, in a, like a, in a in a container. Um, they're they have many wherever you depending on where you buy them from. They have a bunch of names. Um, this one and on this it's called Crystal Blacks. I've seen it um, Black Mamba, Black Panther, something about a black cat. I don't know because the petals are fuzzy. They're like. They're like velvety, um, and then they have that little yellow dot in the middle, but they are so pretty in a big basket. Um, they grow like crazy. Oh, they're just like my favorite. That's my go-to every summer I grow these. Um, let's see. Piquino, red and yellow peppers. These are mild, um, mild to hot. This is gonna be a new one for me. New Mex Joe E. Parker. Um, these are roasting or stuffing, canning, uh, or eating fresh. These are for that. And they're, they're mild. They're mild. More herbs. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. Oh, and these are exciting. I've been waiting for these for a couple years now, and I finally got them when they were in stock. These are a tomatillo, but they're like oddly shaped, almost like a Roma tomato. I'm um, very excited about growing these, and I hope that I can get them to germinate. Um, tomatillos are one of those hard things to germinate, so fingers crossed on that one. And you'll guess it. More purple tomatillos. I don't know what I was thinking this year. Uh, these are from Baker Creek, by the way. I have more lupa. Um, this one I'm excited to grow, but I don't know that I have some space to grow, so I'm hesitant to try. Um, but these kakuzi um, gourds are huge and prolific, and their vines go everywhere. So I'm kind of on the fence if I want to really do it. More cucumber or cucumber. This is a freebie, some Japanese wasabi radishes. Um, I've grown those before. This They're pretty spicy. Um, I don't know. They're pretty spicy, but they're pretty good. And then more. So that's what I bought this year for, to, for my seed haul. I have to put all this away in, in their appropriate little container, so I'm kind of just putting them wherever. But let me go ahead and grab out Um, these are two containers I have already with peppers in them. These are just regular, mild to sweet, and these are my super hots. Another thing that I'm going to pull out, um, onions. I don't 
don't know if I want to grow any of these onions. Oh, what's in this one? Lettuces. Grab this other one here. Ah, my second container. Oh yes, um, my brassicas. Brassicas are better in the cold weather, so I'm gonna grab these out. I might do an artichoke plant. I haven't successfully successfully been able successfully been able to grow um, brassicas, like uh, or artichokes. I mean, but brassicas do. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try a new method this year. Um, artichokes. I get them. To, I can like make a plant, like a start. But then when I put it out in my garden, it dies. So I don't know if I'm just not um, caring for it properly, watering it right. Um, if it's just this isn't like my soil or the climate that we have here. Um, I don't know, but I'm gonna try it again. So that's that one. There's another one I wanted to try, but I don't know. Oh, I don't know exactly where it is in my hole. So I'm not gonna search for it right now, but I want to have some seeds for um, hibiscus laurel. It's like, it's Jamaica. If you've ever had, gone to a Mexican restaurant and ordered that red drink that's like a tea, um, it almost tastes like cranberry um, Jamaica. Um, uh, I, grow, I grew a plant last year, but I don't think I put it in the right place in my garden. I put it in a container hoping that it would thrive there, like in a 20 gallon or something. I don't think it liked, I just don't like think it liked where it was. And so I'm gonna put it in the ground this year and put it in a medium, just medium shade to sunny location and hopefully it'll thrive there and I'll get some flowers this year. Um, but I'll search for that later. But right now I just wanna go through the peppers that I have with you guys and really just plan out what I'm doing this year. All right, so, oh. so, okay. So you saw all the peppers that I already kind of set to the side, but I wanna go through my regulars, um, kind of what I always plant outside. So of course we have our ghost peppers. This is a staple. I usually have about three of these plants in my garden. I do several different habaneros. I have the lemon. So it's a yellow, kind of more traditional one. I have the, no, that's not, this is the traditional one, this orange one. This is the one you see in the stores. And they all have a slightly different flavor. And then here's a red. And I have another. Chiltepin. This one is um, pretty hot. It's, um, it can be expected, it says here, 50, thousand to 250,000 Scovin, um, Scoville. And so um, they're pretty high up there on the heat uh, meter. And those are a staple as well. These ones I always grow, Buena Mulata, super hot. Um, I don't do hot, like hardly, like I can barely handle jalapeno heat, but my husband loves them. But I do always try to taste the peppers so at least I know what I'm working with. And those suckers are super hot. These are hot too, but they're not super hot. Well, they're hot. I would put them in the super hot variety, but compared to like a ghost pepper, they're not going to compare in heat. Um, but I love growing them because they're so pretty to grow. Because literally on one plant, you'll have all of those colors growing at different rates. And so these ones go from this color when they're first like open out of their flower they'll go from like a light to darker and then into these red colors and then into these purples um, this one's kind of a little pinkish before when it goes from like this to this and then to this oh it's just so pretty to see all of those colors on one pepper um so Chinese five color so it, it's not that each pepper stays at whatever color it just goes from their color to their right color. Um, so yeah, I always grow these. They're really fun to grow. Um, this is Korbaki. Um, this one I grow several, uh, kind of a lot. I don't know if you can see on this little picture here. Um, 
it kind of has like this swirly. Let me see, it kind of like swirls. They're like this long. They're super long peppers. And then they spiral as they grow. So I always do those. I have a couple others that I don't have names for. I got, I call this one the Othello um, chili because when we're visiting, we're on a mission trip in Othello, Washington and the, there was a family who cooked for us and they had made a salsa out of these peppers. And my husband loved them so much. They have really a smoky flavor to them and they're little, they're like this big, they're like Tabasco sized peppers. And so they gave us some peppers. I dried the seeds and these are what I have. They're probably getting, I should start new seeds this year, but these ones, I grow them every year since I got these really good. Um, this one, we were visiting family in California and we went to um, a nursery that was just such as this, this random nursery that we found just driving along. And they had pepper plants and we were talking to one of the gardeners and asking about the peppers and he was like, I have no idea what these are called, but here, take a couple peppers from this plant um, just so that you can have them. So of course, save seeds out of it. And now I grow those every year. And they're, these ones are really spicy. Um, again, these ones, I got them at a church that I used to attend in California. I went to visit one year, well in 2020, and they had chilies growing on the property. And, and the, you know, I took a couple and mm, save seeds. Also very hot. Um, and that's what I have. I have so many of these pe um, ghost peppers. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm growing. Those are all going to be in my garden this year. And then I have some of the more like traditional peppers here that I want to share with you. This is, this one is my favorite. It's very mild, but it has such a, a delicious flavor. It's smoky and has, it's aromatic. Oh my God. I just, I use this more uh, for flavoring food than for like experiencing that spicy flavor when it comes to peppers. And it's not like a bell pepper at all. It has a chili pepper flavor without being hot. You'll get a spicy one here and there, but not like, oh my gosh, my mouth is on fire. Just like a uh, cool burn, you know? That makes sense. Um, but these are super prolific and you'll get, off of one plant, you'll get probably two gallons of peppers, maybe more, a lot of peppers. And so I grow these every year. Um, and the, so like when my husband makes salsa for canning, he'll throw several of these in it, not for the spice, but to add the flavor into the salsa. Um, here is a habanada. It's the flavor of a habanero without any of the heat. And then we have some cane peppers, cayenne peppers, I mean, um, some bell peppers, California wonders, Serranos, this is a purple one. Yes, yeah, purple Serrano, uh, regular Serrano. I have some Tabasco. This one I got from my sister's plant, and that was that one grew pretty prolific because I like the line, like the seed line. Um, yeah, and then we have Thai peppers, paprika. Okay, okay, TikTok. Paprika pepper. So there was a thread going around TikTok, at least my side of TikTok for a long time, where people kept saying, did you guys know that paprika was just jalapeno or was it just a bell pepper? No, it's a paprika, paprika pepper. Okay, paprika pepper. I grow those. More shitos. Okay, some jalapenos, basilla. Anaheim chilies, Ancho Grande. This one, I don't know how to say it. Let's see. Bequino. Bequino. Mild. Lemon drops, Sun Bright Sweets. Um, 
What else I have here? Oh, large red cherries. These are really good. I grow these a lot. And it looks like that's what I have here. So these are, I won't grow all of these peppers probably. I'll grow a majority of them, but not all of them. I, do, I tend to not really grow like bell peppers or sweet peppers. Just because we don't eat a whole bunch of them at my house. And so I like to grow things that we're going to eat. And so I'd rather save the space, even though I really like bell peppers and I buy them here and there in the grocery store, but I don't feel like it's worth um, taking up a space in my garden when you're only going to get a few peppers out of it anyways. I don't know. It's to me, I value every square inch of my garden for things that I want there to be there and bell peppers just don't make, just don't make the list. So those are all the peppers that I'll be growing this year. Um, next thing I want to show you is onions. So I know it's so easy to like go to, to a, a garden center or nursery and pick up um, just some sets, some starts of onions. Um, but I tend to not do so well in my garden with them. They like want to go to seed right away. And I don't want that. As soon as they try to go to seed, like they're not going to grow anymore. And so I end up with these really tiny onions and I want a, a big onion. Um, so some of the things I'm going to do is the Walla Walla, like I showed you earlier. I have this Utah yellow sweet. Um, this one's not a very big onion, but it tastes really good. Now I always go for the red onions. And then I have these ones. I grew these last year and they had a nice sweet flavor. I really enjoyed these. Um, more are these ones? And these are just like, um, like green onions with the red, they're a red onion, but you know, for the, well, those are good. And then I have real green onions. Um, I haven't successfully grown these to this size. They've always just been like little grass. They look like grass. So I don't know if I'm just not growing them right. I don't know. And then I have chives. I've been trying to get a bunch of chives to be permanent in my garden. And I had it one year come back after the frost. Um, but then it didn't come back a second year. So I'm going to try again. Um, and see if I can get them to just be in my garden. It would be nice to just have some chives. Always growing. And they're really pretty when they flower. And the bees love them. So those are the onions I'm going to be trying this year. And what do I have here? Oh, cabbages. I have never, ever grown a successful cabbage. Kale is easy. Lettuce is fine. Um, where are my cabbages? Do I have them? Are they in here? Hello? Oh, I just spilled off other seeds. Kale seeds. Maybe my cabbages are in a different. These are all kales. Okay, well that was pointless effort. Cabbages, I have both red and green cabbages um, seeds. And I'll be trying to grow those again this year. And those are things that I wanna start the seeds now so that when it's time for them to go out, they're ready. Cause cabbage, any of the brassicas are cold hardy. So you wanna get them out early spring um, so that they have time to grow before the heat hits um, and before they try to go to seed. Cause as soon as it gets too hot, they'll start to, they'll start to go to seed. And then you've lost your, you've lost it. So yeah, so anyways, more, oh, here they are. Here they are, I found them. So I have uh, Copenhagen green, or green cabbage. And I'm also gonna try some cauliflower. Mammoth bread, and then this one. So yeah, those are. I had more broccoli rab, but it's spilled. It's spilled. That's why I have more these. And then, like I said to you before, the artichoke. Probably do like two or three starts to see if I can get them to. Oh look at I found the roselle. Okay, let's do this one. How many seeds do I have left? I tried several last year. I have a good handful left. 
Here's what the seats look like. Kind of funky looking. Like little... Eh. I don't know. I don't know if it's even worth trying to show you. Yeah, that's what they look like. I have a few left. A few viable ones left, it looks like. And I'll probably have to buy more for next year. Unless I can grow them. And then I'll save seeds. No. So yeah, that's what I'm doing this year. At least right now. Um, so you saw a selection of what I want to grow. Um, for this uh, early seed season. Um, then we'll come back and do... You know, a tomato. We'll talk about tomatoes in another day because I can talk about tomatoes forever because I love them so much. Mm. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. And um, I'd love to see the things or talk about the things that you are going to grow. Um, Till next time, have a good, have a good day. <laughs>